Let's get into EMX royalty. All right, our forward-looking statement. All right, we, I, I'm, I'll go through this pretty quickly and then we'll get on to uh, recent developments in the company. Uh, we su subscribe to a three-pronged approach to our business model. Uh, it's an unconventional business model. It's a little more complex than a uh, conventional royalty business model. Uh, we engage in what's called royalty generation. So through the prospect generation business model, we go out and acquire prospective mineral real estate around the globe, do some basic inexpensive explorations on that property, find enough signs of mineralization or outright mineralization to entice another company to come in and purchase that um, property, and then we hold back a royalty on that property. Um, in the intervening period while that pro property is developing, um, we also collect uh, an upfront fee from that company who bought the property, and that could be in the uh, form of cash and or share payments. Uh, then we're going to get uh, uh, annual payments from the uh, new uh, property owner. Um, milestone payments, so if they come to a pre-feasibility study, a feasibility study, they commence production, they produce their first million ounces of gold, something like that, those would be examples of milestones that would then trigger another payment. Also, if we manage the property for that um, uh, partner, then we garner a 10% management fee for doing that. So we get cash in from a lot of different uh, um, angles long before it ever goes into production, assuming that it does. And then also on a lot of our properties, we get advanced royalty payments. So we are garnering um, royalty payments before it actually goes into production. And then we also um, do make royalty acquisitions, write big checks for royalties, which is the conventional royalty business model, uh, when we can find those at favorable pricing valuations. But of course, that's become extremely competitive. But nonetheless, uh, we have found some great values out there, uh, particularly recently. And then last but not least is strategic investment. So if we find a company with a project in its portfolio that we think is grossly under-recognized in the market, yet stands a significant chance of producing outsized financial returns, we may invest in that company directly and help them develop that project both in a geologic context and as uh, uh, on marketing terms to help uh, bring about a, uh, a financial event or liquidation monetization of that event. Uh, the best example of that in our portfolio would be when we sold uh, Malmish in Far East Russia. That was a project we had $13 million into. Um, and then we sold that for $200 million U.S. And that our portion of that uh, gain was uh, $69 million U.S. or about $90 million Canadian. Uh, let's take a look at our um, share ownership. About 12% of our share shares are held by EMX employees. Uh, management and um, uh, the board of directors and so on. So there's a, we have a lot of skin in the game. SSR Mining owns about 11% of us. Stevens Asset Management, about 10%. Uh, that's Paul Stevens out of San Francisco. He's the guy who took Apple public. Uh, Free, uh, Franco Nevada, they're a recent uh, shareholder. Um, they, um, we did a financing through them, and they acquired about, uh, on a fully diluted basis, just over 6% of our shares. And I will add that this is the first time in Franklin, Nevada's history that they have ever acquired shares in a junior company. And then, of course, Sprott, uh, and that's Sprott um, Inc. Uh, that does not include their uh, discretionary uh, uh, clients and so on. Uh, which would add another oh, probably 15% or so on top of that 5%. Uh, Newmont owns shares, so does Adrian Day, and so does U.S. Global Funds. Uh, recent deals. Um, we made a strategic investment in premium nickel resources, which has projects in Botswana. So this is really interesting because um, the government of Botswana was operating a nickel mine. Now, I think most of you would agree that uh, most governments are very, uh, aren't very good at um, operating countries. Well, they do even a worse job at operating mines. And um, so that mine uh, went defunct. 
And then um, our colleagues at Premium Nickel uh, went and acquired that along with a couple of other uh, very interesting uh, nickel, cobalt, um, copper, PGM properties in Botswana. This is a strategic investment for us, and we think this could pay off very, very handsomely for us, so keep your eyes on that. Um, and then the second one, we completed that $10 million financing with Franco Nevada, which I just alluded to. Um, and then we acquired additional royalty interest in Casarones, which I prefer to call Casarones, which is a cap copper molybdenum mine in uh, Chile. Uh, we had made an investment in there earlier where we had acquired a 0.4118% royalty interest in that. That's a net smelter royalty, or NSR. And then we made a further investment in there, so we're up to 0.7335%, uh, partially with the um, uh, funding provided to us um, by Franco Nevada. And that's paying off very well for us. Um, that's um, the last royalty check we got from them, which um, is paid out quarterly, was in excess of a million dollars. And that was before we um, upped our percentage there. So this is going to turn out to be a very handsome ATM for us. Um, and then EMX received um, almost $19 million U.S. in a settlement from Barrick Gold. So we had a long-standing uh, lawsuit with Barrick over uh, an area of interest sur uh, surrounding some, ad some um, assets on the Carlin trend. Uh, that was finally resolved in a court of law, and that uh, padded our treasury nicely also. And then the last one I'll talk about is, um, you know, our business model of uh, royalty generation in, uh, involves selling properties off. Well, since January of 2018 to current, we have sold in 83 properties around the globe, thereby creating a royalty on each one. We currently have over 125 royalties in our portfolio, and collectively with the properties that we have available for partnership around the globe right now, that property portfolio exceeds 250 properties. Okay, the SSR mining portfolio. So we did a deal with SSR mining, and um, we picked up a number of uh, royalty properties there. Uh, the most... Um, um, Pertinent one to us right now would be Gerek Tepe, which in Turkish means notched hill. And we have, there's an, a gold oxide zone. And then underneath that is a VMS or volcanogenic massive sulfide system, a polymetallic system, uh, where we have a 2% royalty. On the gold oxide zone, we have a 10% uh, royalty on that. They have commenced production on that. Um, as of a month ago, they've produced about 4,000 ounces of gold. Our royalty does not begin paying until they have recovered 10,000 ounces. We think that should occur right around the end of June, early July, and then that 10% NSR kicks in, and that thing's going to be a multi-million dollar per year gusher. They will be mining that oxide zone. Um, the bulk of that will happen in about three years, and then that will continue on for another two years. Then we get into the polymetallic zone underneath that, and that is uh, gold, silver, copper, and zinc, and that should continue on for many years after that. And then uh, Yana Pizar and uh, Dela Blaios are in the development phase. Uh, moving on to Leeville. This is a, a royalty we have on the Carlin trend in Nevada. Um, it's a big royalty um, uh, footprint. And then this incorporates a number of different um, uh, mines in the area. I think the, uh, and we're getting close to about $200,000 a month from that. Uh, this is our Canadian royalty portfolio. This is just, this is fairly new to us, so I just wanted to uh, share this with our uh, Canadian investors because prior to this, we really didn't have any um, our, uh, property interest in Canada. And of course, a lot of this is in the Red Lake area and Timmins and things like that, so very important places. And moving on to Balia, this is a lead zinc silver mine that has just recently commenced production. We have a 4% unviable, uncapped royalty on this. 
and then Kukuru Peki or uh, Timok in Serbia. We have a half a percent royalty on this. Uh, they have commenced production on this, and currently that um, uh, royalty uh, is um, uh, being, being um, uh, disputed with Zhejin, but they're very open and amenable to discussion on this. Dis negotiations are ongoing on this. This is a royalty we paid two and a, we paid two hundred thousand dollars Canadian for. So um, we expect life of mine. This will pay us in excess of two hundred million. So we think that's going to be a, a handsome uh, return on investment there. And that's it for me for um, for right now. Thank you so much.